Hi there. Today we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary movie, Batman. I'm sure many of you hold fond memories of this classic show. Batman is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the movies with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in the year 2023. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of Batman together. Number 1. Adam West as Bruce Wayne We all recognize the significance of Bruce Wayne, but the importance of Adam West to the Batman series cannot be overstated. He not only played the leading man, but more importantly, served as the unwavering straight man for all of Robin's humorous one-liners and the eccentricities of the villains. West handled it with grace, always ready to pull something out of his utility belt to tackle any problem. Contrary to the image of a brooding dark knight, Batman is no stranger to adventure. He's an international sportsman, engaging in thrilling activities such as potholing, fishing, and falconry, is there anything this guy can't do? Surprisingly, even as a kid, Batman showcased uncanny talent. At the young age of 11, he was crowned the Junior Marbles Champion of Gotham City. Pundits of a less-than-kind nature summed up actor Adam West's career in one simple sentence. He played Batman on TV. Thought he was a prolific actor, none of his credits prior to or after the iconic 1960s television series eclipsed it in popularity or cultural influence, and for many years, West relied on public appearances in his Batman costume to make ends meet. But like many actors who found themselves typecast by a single role, he handled the public myopia and critical brickbats with exceptional good humor that self-deprecating attitude eventually helping to make him an in-demand guest star and voiceover artist for numerous cartoons, including a fictional and deeply deluded version of himself on Family Guy, Fox, 1999-2002-2005. Bruce Wayne played by Adam West when he was 38 years old. Sadly, on June 9, 2017, West died from leukemia in Los Angeles at the age of 88. Number 2. Burt Ward as Robin Just like any typical son looking up to his dad, Robin sees Bruce as his ultimate role model and craves knowledge straight from the source. Learning from Mr. Wayne feels like uncovering the mysteries of the universe, an amazing mentorship, when he's not patrolling the tough streets of Gotham, Robin enjoys quirky hobbies. Whether he's practicing the tuba, playing the piano, or perfecting his bird calls, he always finds unique ways to spend his time at Wayne Manor. In real life, Bert was quite the boy wonder, excelling in sports and holding the title of the world's fastest reader. Imagine this. He took a test before the American Medical Society, reading an astonishing 30,000 words per minute with a 90% comprehension rate. Now compare that to the average of 240 words and 40% comprehension, truly something extraordinary. Actor Burt Ward emerged from relative obscurity to become a pop culture sensation in the mid-1960s as Robin, the boy wonder, on Batman. ABC, 1966-68. His lack of experience perfectly suited the golly gee nature of the role, and alongside co-star Adam West, who portrayed the Dark Knight, they became television's darlings for three years. Following the show's cancellation, Ward found himself in the realm reserved for stars whose brilliance faded as swiftly as it appeared. A continuous loop of low-budget films and convention appearances often donning the iconic costume. However, Ward embraced this change of fortune, leveraging his past success to its fullest. In doing so, he secured a measure of immortality, maintaining a devoted following that, though aging, remained faithful. 
Burt Ward made a recent appearance reprising his role as Dick Grayson in a 2019 episode of Supergirl. Robin played by Burt Ward when he was 21 years old and now he is 78 years old. Number 3. Alan Napier as Alfred Not Every Hero Dons a Cape and Alfred is a prime example. He's the incredible caretaker of none other than Bruce Wayne, also known as Batman. This refined gentleman surpasses the role of a mere butler. He stands as a steadfast pillar of support, wit, and a reservoir of skills, making him the superhero's superhero. Taking on the position of Bruce's surrogate father, Alfred brings not only unwavering loyalty, but also an intellect sharper than Batman's reliable Batarang. When it comes to fencing, he could rival Zorro. And if you happen to explore his secret painting studio, you might chance upon a masterpiece. Alfred is genuinely a versatile gem. Tall, gaunt, and elegant character actor. Alan Napier was born in England. After gaining significant stage and some film experience, he relocated to the United States in 1939. Known for his mustachioed appearance, Napier almost always portrayed gentlemanly roles that conveyed British sophistication. His repertoire included noblemen, butlers, senior officers, professors, aristocrats, and occasionally a villager or con man. With over 70 film credits, some notable roles include The House of the Seven Gables, The Song of Bernadette, Three Strangers, Julius Caesar, and The Court Jester. A prolific TV performer, Napier achieved significant recognition as Alfred, the impeccable butler to the Caped Crusaders, in the camp classic Batman. Interestingly, he was the first actor cast in the Batman series the following year, despite having never read the comics before accepting the role. His portrayal left a lasting impact, and in a tribute, Jack Nicholson's Joker in the 1989 film was named Jack Napier. Alfred played by Alan Napier when he was 63 years old. Sadly, Napier died of natural causes on 8th of August, 1988, in the Berkeley East Convalescent Hospital in Santa Monica, California. He was 85 years old. Number four, Neil Hamilton as Gordon. In a world where everyone clamors for the spotlight, Gordon stands tall as the beacon of practicality and unwavering morality. He's akin to the Clark Kent of Gotham, keeping his feet firmly grounded while others soar around in flashy costumes. In a city filled with dreamers, he's a realist, recognizing that sometimes you have to make do with what you've got. Neil Hamilton approached the role with seriousness, reportedly advising his fellow actors to adopt a more somber demeanor rather than indulging in the seemingly appropriate humor. Hamilton was a seasoned actor with a career spanning both silent films and the era of talkies. He gained recognition for his role in the 1930 film The Dawn Patrol, directed by Howard Hawks. Notably, he portrayed Harry Holt in the 1932 movie Tarzan the Ape Man, a character he reprised two years later for Tarzan and His Mate. As film opportunities waned, Hamilton transitioned to television, making appearances in series such as seven episodes of Perry Mason and five episodes of 77 Sunset Strip. His final film role was in the 1970 production Which Way to the Front?, directed by and starring Jerry Lewis. Hamilton's last credited appearance was in The Perennial Gardener with Karen Strobeen, PBS, 1998-2001. Gordon played by Neil Hamilton when he was 67 years old. Sadly, Hamilton died at the age of 85 on September 24, 1984, after suffering a severe asthma attack. Number 5. Stafford Rep as Chief O'Hara. Chief of Police O'Hara is on the scene, and he possesses more determination in his pinky finger than most people have in their entire body. Directly from the Emerald Shores of Ireland, O'Hara brings his robust work ethic and no-nonsense attitude to the tough streets of Gotham. He's akin to a human tornado, tearing through the city with a justice-driven force that leaves criminals quaking in their boots. When it comes to dealing with the bad guys, O'Hara doesn't pull any punches. Stafford Rep achieved remarkable success as a skilled actor, 
gracing the screen in various films throughout his Hollywood career. According to Adam West, Neil Hamilton, who portrayed Commissioner Gordon on the show, wasn't fond of Rep's faux Irish accent, and their on-screen camaraderie was much friendlier than their real-life interactions. During his time on Batman, he made guest appearances on numerous other television programs, including I Dream of Jeannie and The Mothers-in-Law, where he once again took on the role of a policeman. After Batman's cancellation in 1968, Rep made shrewd financial investments, including a partnership in a chain of car washes, which brought him significant financial success. His final released film was Psycho Psycho in 1973. Chief O'Hara played by Stafford Rep when he was 48 years old. Sadly, Rep died at age 56 on November 5, 1974, in Inglewood, California. Number 6. Madge Blake as Mrs. Cooper Harriet is a devoted aunt to Dick Grayson, committed to imparting not only traditional moral values, but also a diverse range of skills. She strives to broaden his knowledge by teaching him subjects like Latin, Greek, and piano. However, Harriet is not limited to academics alone. She is also an enthusiastic baseball fan and finds enjoyment in watching thrilling boxing matches. Prior to her role in Batman, she had a recurring role on the Jack Benny program as the president of the Jack Benny fan club, Pasadena Chapter. She played Millie Brinkerhoff in the episode Instant Wedding in the 1963 NBC military drama, the lieutenant starring Gary Lockwood in the title role. Blake appeared in the pilot episode of The Addams Family, broadcast in the U.S. in September 1964, as Miss Comstock, an official from the Addams Children's School. Blake also appeared in a memorable episode of I Love Lucy in 1957, with George Reeves guest-starring as Superman, and in an earlier episode in 1954 as store clerk, Mrs. Mulford. At one point, the producers of Batman wanted to fire Blake for unknown reasons. Adam West, with whom she had become friends, stood up for her, and she kept her job. The next day, he found a freshly baked cake in his dressing room. Mrs. Cooper played by Madge Blakey when she was 67 years old. Unfortunately, Blakey was admitted to Huntington Memorial Hospital, where she deed at age 69, the result of a heart attack. Number 7. Yvonne Craig. As Batgirl Batgirl, a vivacious and energetic teenager embodies the lively spirit reminiscent of the former Robin. Infused with a passion for adventure and armed with a playful sense of humor, she effortlessly engages in banter with both villains and heroes. Commissioner Gordon's daughter, Batgirl, assumes the role of a crime-fighting partner alongside Batman and Robin in Season 3. Adding a touch of envy to the mix, her sleek motorcycle becomes the coveted spectacle, leaving Batman viewers yearning for a ride into the exhilarating unknown. A beautiful and engaging actress best known for her role as Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl, on the playful TV classic Batman, ABC 1966-68, Yvonne Craig started out as a ballet dancer. She was the second lead dancer in the ballet Russe de Monte Carlo before moving into acting in her 20s. Her early acting career included a series of small film parts, including roles in the teen hit Gidget, 1959, jazz biopic The Gene Krupa Story, 1959, and western The Young Land, 1959, where she appeared alongside Dennis Hopper, all in 1959. During this period, Craig also made regular appearances on television in guest roles before securing her career-defining role as Barbara Gordon, or Batgirl, in the campy hit Batman. Following the conclusion of the show, Craig returned to guest roles, leaving an indelible mark as Marta, the green-skinned alien slave in the Star Trek, NBC 1966-69, episode Whom Gods Destroy, before retiring in the early 90s. In the later years of her life, Craig lent her voice to the animated children's series, Olivia, Nickelodeon 2009-2012, portraying the character of Grandma. Yvonne Craig passed away on August 17, 2015, 
at her residence in Pacific Palisades, California, after a battle with breast cancer. Batgirl played by Yvonne Craig when she was 30 years old. Unfortunately, Craig died at age 78 at her home in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, California, on August 17, 2015, from breast cancer that had spread to her liver. Number 8. Cesar Romero as the Joker Did you hear that? The infamous Joker is in town, poised to unleash his maniacal mayhem upon Gotham City. With an unwavering commitment to chaos, the Joker is a force of nature beyond control. He reigns as the clown prince of crime, boasting a personality as vibrant as a carnival and a laughter that reverberates through the night. Behind that painted smile hides a mastermind, orchestrating the most diabolical schemes. Once he sets his sights on a goal, there's no halting this enigmatic force. Cesar Romero smoothly entered Hollywood's inner circle with the moniker The Latin from Manhattan. Yet among his fellow 20th Century Fox contract players, he was affectionately known as Butch, a playful nickname given the irony that Cesar Romero would never embody the boy-next-door persona. A notable transformation occurred late in his career when he assumed the role of the clown-faced Joker on ABC's Batman, 1966-68, delighting in subjecting the dynamic duo to an array of mischievous practical jokes. Romero, a lifelong bachelor, had no children. His presence at Hollywood events often saw him accompanying actresses like Joan Crawford, Linda Darnell, Barbara Stanwyck, Lucille Ball, Anne Sheridan, Jane Wyman, Agnes Moorhead, and Ginger Rogers. Speculation about Romero's private nature regarding his sexuality has been a topic among Hollywood historians and biographers. In 1996, Bose Hadley authored Hollywood Gays, a book claiming interviews in which Romero allegedly came out. The Joker played by Cesar Romero when he was 59 years old. Sadly, on January 1, 1994, at age 86, Romero died from complications of a blood clot while being treated for bronchitis and pneumonia at St. John's Health Center in Santa Monica, California. Number 9. Burgess Meredith as the Penguin Unlike his fellow villains, the Penguin stands out with his preference for sophistication over madness. Possessing the intellect of a mastermind and the refined demeanor of a gentleman, he carves a unique niche in Gotham City's rogue gallery. While some may recklessly indulge in their deranged obsessions, the Penguin takes a different path. Burgess Meredith, a versatile actor with a voice that seamlessly shifted between gruff and warm tones, initially captured attention on Broadway in productions like The Barretts of Wimpole Street, 1935, and Winter Set, 1935 to 36. He went on to achieve equal acclaim in movies and television, showcasing his talents as a performer, writer, and director across various mediums. While Meredith sometimes downplayed his ambition in interviews, his career was marked by versatility. He effortlessly donned multiple hats, contributing to plays, features, and hundreds of performances. His success primarily stemmed from character roles, gaining widespread recognition for his portrayal of the Penguin on the iconic Batman TV series, ABC 1966-68, and as Sylvester Stallone's cantankerous mentor, Mickey Goldmill, in four Rocky franchise entries. Whether delivering Shakespearean performances or starring in horror potboilers, Meredith's professionalism and dependability allowed him to maintain a prolific career that spanned over six decades. The Penguin played by Burgess Meredith when he was 59 years old. Sadly, on September 9, 1997, Meredith died at age 89 from complications of Alzheimer's disease and melanoma. Number 10. Julie Newmar as the Catwoman Catwoman is a skilled and agile thief who employs her acrobatic prowess and strategic intellect to outwit her adversaries. Renowned for her cat-themed gadgets and mastery in manipulating feline companions, she brings a unique flair to her criminal pursuits. With proficiency in martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand combat, Catwoman proves to be a formidable opponent, 
capable of holding her ground against even the likes of Batman and Robin. Before her iconic portrayal of Catwoman in Batman, Julie Newmar had already established herself as a seasoned actress. She earned a Tony Award in 1959 for her role in the play The Marriage Go-Round and starred in the series My Living Doll. Post her time as Catwoman, she made numerous TV guest appearances on shows like The Monkees, Star Trek, Get Smart, and Bewitched. Julie also made cameo appearances as herself, notably in the movie To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything Julie Newmar, and the show Melrose Place. Her latest on-screen role was in a 2006 episode of According to Jim. In a delightful return to the role, Julie Newmar reprised Catwoman in 2016 and 2017, lending her voice to the character in the animated movies Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders and Batman vs. Two-Face. This reunion brought together the original Batman trio, with Adam West and Burt Ward joining her, recreating the magic from their 60s collaboration. The Catwoman played by Julie Newmar when she was 33 years old, and now she is 89 years old. We reflect on the incredible journey of the Batman cast from 1990, witnessing their growth and transformations. It's evident that the bond forged during those years has left an enduring legacy. From thrilling highway pursuits to heartwarming moments, these actors brought the California Highway Patrol to life. Their stories continue to resonate with fans around the world. As we explore their then and now, we celebrate the enduring impact of Batman. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down the California highways with the remarkable Batman cast of yesteryear.